Hi all, I'm Blaine. Welcome back to Utopia University. I'm part of the IT crew here at Utopia Fiber, and today we'll be talking about something very specific to uh, to what I do, and that's cybersecurity. I have several tips to go over with you to help you stay safe and secure. Let's jump into it. So the first tip is your password. It's authentication. Authentication really is you proving who you are, that you are who you are. The first part of that again is your username and password. The password uh, is something that you know and only you should know. That password uh, should be something that is memorable, something you can remember because if you keep forgetting your password, that's problematic. But it should also be something complex and not easy to guess. So a good way to, to keep your, your password complex is to introduce additional characters, upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and even symbols. That helps you keep the password complex. So to take it a step further, you could actually use a password manager, something like LastPass, Bitwarden, or 1Password. What those managers allow you to do is it allows you to generate a unique password for every site or service that you use. I know a lot of times uh, we like to use the same password for every site that we go to. So we have the same password for our bank account as we do for our social media, as we do for our school website. That's horrible because if one website gets compromised, all the passwords are compromised. So the, the great thing about that is with your password manager is if you do have a password that's compromised, you don't have to worry about all the other passwords being compromised. You can change that password and not have to worry about changing all the other passwords as well. The other thing too is you can rotate those passwords and, and change them often so it makes it a lot more difficult for, for someone trying to get your information to, to compromise those accounts. The next tip is to actually go through and use what's called multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication uses a separate application, something like Microsoft Authenticator or Google Authenticator. And what they do is they will be associated with your the account that you're trying to secure. And what they will do is they will actually generate a code that you use when you log in. Someone may be able to get your password, but if they don't have that code, they can't get any further. So use multi-factor authentication. The next method you can use, and this goes along with your multi-factor authentication, is using biometrics. I'm sure that you have used something like a face scan, a retinal scan, or even a fingerprint scan. And those things, again, biometrics being a measurement of life, those things help secure your account as well because it's something you are, and that's really hard to fake as well. So tip number four is to run antivirus and anti-malware software on your computer. These are pieces of software that are specifically designed to keep track of things that are coming and going on your computer to try and keep you safe from potential malware hacks or potential problems with your, your system. They're very important to keep updated. They, if they're not updated, they won't keep track of the most recent problems that, that are out there on the internet. So keep them updated. Make sure you do uh, regular scans. Tip number five is to keep a backup. Back up your important files and keep them protected. Now. It's important that you understand that a backup is not just copying everything over to a thumb drive and being good. A backup, a real backup, is something that is copied multiple times. So you have a copy of the file on your computer. You may have a, a backup on a thumb drive. It's also a good idea to use something like a cloud backup as well. So having multiple copies of the data on different media and preferably in a different geographical location. The last piece that's really important as well is that you test those backups regularly. Make sure that you can actually recover your tax. Make sure you can recover those, those pictures that are so important to you. Make sure that your backups are sound and, and properly tested. So tip number six is tied to social media. Social media is life at this point. Um, you're able to create a digital presence for yourself and for your loved ones. It's a way to communicate. It's a way to, to share. It's a way to really understand what's going on in the world, not just from the, from the media, but also from those who you, you contact and, and regularly communicate with. Social media is so important. It's used for authentication, like we talked about before. So you need to make sure that your social media is kept secure as well. That's the fun part about social media is that nowadays, everything you put on social media, it stays on social media. So it's important that you go through and understand what it is that you're putting out there. Don't share important things to you like birth dates, social security numbers, your credit card information, your banking account information, other information that you wanna keep secure that you wouldn't want a stranger to have, don't put it out on social media. Because again, once you put it on social media, it's on social media forever. Okay. 
Tip number seven ties to mobile safety. And we just barely talked about social media. The device that you typically would, would do social media on or work through social media on is your mobile device. Your mobile device, your phone or your tablet, uh, even a watch can be used to, to access the internet and therefore needs to be secure as well. Think about all the things you do with your phone. You, you bank with your phone. You take pictures of loved ones with your phone. Connect to your social media with your phone. Your phone really is kind of the lifeblood uh, of your communication process. So it's important to keep that phone secure. Again, going back to passwords we talked about before, make sure that you're using a password. Typically, it's going to be a PIN. You can also introduce biometrics we talked about before as well. Measurement of life. You're using a, either a fingerprint scan or a face scan in order to get into your phone. The last tip has to do with fishing. Now, we're not talking about trying to catch a fish with a, a line and a lure, but we are kind of talking about something related. It's fishing with a pH. Fishing is the idea or the, the concept that someone's trying to get information from you by presenting you fake information. Okay, a lot of times this is going to be a website that's sent to you via email or via text. Those websites may be curated to look exactly like your bank website or your kid's school website. The point of this is that people will try to, to use that fake website or that spoofed website to try and get your information, your login, your password, perhaps your bank account information. They're so sophisticated, so it's important you keep track of, of what's going on. So if you receive an email or a text that you think may not be quite right, whether it's worded improperly, whether there's an attachment that you're really not expecting, don't click on the link. Don't open that attachment. Make sure you go through and and confirm that what you're receiving is legitimate. The other thing you can do is if you receive an attachment, a, a link, a phone number, instead of clicking on those links or using that phone number to call a company, go directly to the website instead and get the contact information from them directly. A lot of times if you have a phone number that comes across a text message or in an email, if it's phishing, they'll have somebody on the other line and they'll, they'll try to convince you that they are from your bank or from your school. It's really important that you reach out directly using the proper resources instead of using something that comes across a text or an email. All right, so just as a recap, you wanna make sure that you are keeping your passwords safe and using complex and potentially randomized passwords through something like last password or one password. You wanna make sure that you're using multi-factor authentication, using something that generates a code for you in order to access your, your accounts, keep your accounts secure. Make sure you keep your computer, your phone, any of your devices updated. Make sure the operating system software and the application software are updated and fully patched. Now remember, backups, true backups, are number one, on different types of media, number two, in different geographical locations, and number three, tested to make sure they're valid files. Remember, with social media, whatever you put out there, stays out there. Keep your mobile devices safe. Make sure to use biometrics to, to log into those devices to keep your, your account and your information safe. And last one, be wary of phishing. Be wary of those scams that, that come across via text and email, and even potentially over the phone. Make sure that you're verifying who it is that's sending you the information and make sure the information is valid as well. Thank you for joining me here on Utopia University again today. We hope you learned something new today. And if you did, hit that like button and of course, subscribe. See you next time.